Hi, my name is Patrick, and I'd like to welcome you to yet another soldering learning stream. Today, we're going to be doing, hopefully, both of these two kits that I have here, one dealing with um, series and parallel electronic circuits, and one dealing with multiplexers, which is where you have uh, multiple buttons needed to highlight a single thing, I believe. Anyway, we're going to learn about it. So we're going to be starting with the electronics series versus parallel. So let me go ahead and pop this open here real quick. Where is my short knife? There we go. Okay. And we'll go ahead and take our components out and get them sorted here on the desk. And this board is a bit bigger than the ones that we've previously worked with. It's a bit longer. Well, not bigger than one of the largest projects I've done, but um, wider by certain and then we've got our handy dandy resistor guide here so let's go ahead and get our components out we've got a lot of capacitors this time and a lot of resistors as well we can take this and put it back in the box and we'll just set this to the side so we're not going to need it right away here is a bunch of resistors, and it looks like they are different, uh, but that they are same in the groups, so that's good. Um, and then we've got a number of capacitors, and apologies for the person yelling outside, I can't do a lot about them. So we've got a 1,000 microfarad, a, another 1,000 microfarad. Uh, Let's see, what is this one? This one is also 1,000 microfarads, so it looks like they're all the same capacitance. I'm just getting the leads bent out correctly, and then one more, of course. Uh, yeah, 1,000 microfarad capacitor. Okay, so we've got our three capacitors, and I've got those set aside over there. I'll just stick that right there. Uh, we've got four LEDs, all green. And we have our standoffs for the board itself. Uh, we have our post for the power connector, the power connector itself, which I'm just going to set aside over, uh, yeah, up here. Should be fine. Put it in the same bin as our large capacity stuff. And we've got two uh, dipole switches, which we're going to just throw in here with the LEDs. So first thing we're going to want to do is the capacitors and, or the, sorry, the resistors. And it looks like I should have two 10K Okay, so four 10K resistors and four 470 ohm resistors. Okay, so we're gonna need to figure out which of these resistors is which really quick, and we can probably do this pretty quickly just based on my recollection of things. This is a, that looks like a yellow, brown, red. Or is that purple? Purple, red? Whoops, upside down. There we go. brown this is probably the 470 yeah yellow violet red 47 multiplier 100 yeah 470 okay these are probably the 470 capacitors see keep saying capacitor when i mean resistor these are capacitors these are resistors all right and this is probably going to be the other one this is a brown black orange so brown for one, black for zero, orange for 1,000. Yep, these are our 10K. So 10 times 100 is 1,000. All right, so these are our 10K. So we'll go ahead and install these first, just to make sure. Okay, get that trash out of the way here. And let's go ahead and put our 10k resistors in the board where it wants us to and to do that we're gonna just bend it at a little angle here and then put it through the provided feed holes which is fine just like that and then flip it over and bend the things out of the way perfect so we'll do all the 10k ones first just so they're nicely mounted Let's get a 
the 10k resistor right there. Okay, flip it over and spread the leads out of the way. And then this one we're going to do top to bottom to be the uh, the read order of the resistor. So the good thing about resistors is it doesn't matter which orientation you put them in. in. Uh, they will be fine either way. And we're just doing this to, oh, we got a little bit of a crossover going here. Okay, cool. So that's a 10K resistor right there. And somebody is, is visiting <laughs> back in the garage. <laughs> My neighbors just got home again. Okay, let's see here. I need to bend this one. Okay, another 10K resistor there. All right, red. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So we've got all the leads in. That's nice and happy. And now we're going to turn our soldering iron on and get ready to solder these in. Make sure that they are nice and happy where they are. And because we're doing through hole soldering, we're gonna solder from the back side. So let me get my helping hands here set up really quick. To hold this in place so that I can do this more easily. Uh, let's rotate that around this way. There we go. Okay, perfect. So that's ready to go. Uh, let me get my soldering iron turned on. Let it warm up. It should only take a few seconds, hopefully. Let me set that over there. And I've got my solder here ready to go as well. 250, 290, 300, 37, 310, 316. Okay, good. It is at heat. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn on our fan. And we're going to pre-tin our soldering iron a little bit just to get it ready to go. Great. This helps with heat conductance. Okay, that looks good. And I'm actually going to just take a moment and double, triple check my resistor, resistor values because I don't want to get this wrong. Um, whoops. Resistor calculator. Let's see here. Resistor color code calculator, perfect. And the color on this is, of course, we have brown, black, orange. So brown, black, uh, multiplier is orange. And calculate it. It says, uh, yeah, 10,000. All right, so that looks good to me. All right. We are solid and ready to go ahead and solder these on. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's go ahead and turn the fan back on and get this going. Looks good. So we're going to apply it, a heat to our pad and our thing, and then we apply the solder. Just like that, and that looks really good. Okay. Cool. Okay, good. And it's important when you do this, from my understanding, that you 
apply the heat to the thing you want the solder to adhere to and not, um, you're not applying solder to the iron, you're applying it to the, the lead. Come on, there we go. Okay, good. I might have to do this one and then snip it, um, because these are kind of in the way of each other. Just a second here, I'm just gonna make this slightly easier on myself here. Yeah, we'll snip those out of the way first so that I don't have to deal with them. All right. Uh, okay, good. Put those on my magnetic little holder. And then and now we have a nice uh, access to do the other one here real quick. Okay, cool. Okay, last one. I need a little more. There we go. This is kind of there. Perfect. Okay. First batch of resistors on. Let's go ahead and snap all the leads off with our flush cutters. Slightly awkward guys under here. There we go. Okay, great. So that's our first set of resistors all done. And let's just double check the work here. Looks good on all ends. There's a lot of, <laughs> yeah, it went through pretty heavy. Maybe I shouldn't have been feeding as much, but the 10K resistors are all in there and happy. We can probably lift a little bit off of the board there if we wanted to, but I'm not going to worry about it. So now we're going to put in the 470 ohm resistors, which as we read on our handy dandy little card here, uh, was yellow, violet, and then brown. And sure enough, uh, the color on these are hard to see, but it is yellow, violet, brown. And they come in nice little strips like this for ease of use. Okay. Here we go. Put the trash over there. Hey, how's it going, Tech Life? Good to see you. The yellow is really hard to see on this. I wish it was, was more, like, prominent than it is. But it is yellow, violet, brown. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that one right there. I'll go ahead and bend the, hold this down and bend the leads out of the way. There we go. Pardon the background noise again. Okay, bend that down there. Uh, bend that down there. Okay.
just some chill time. I, I should probably put on some background music at some point during these streams, but I haven't taken the time to find some copyright-free content that I could put on yet. So that's just how it is. All right, bend those out. Good. Okay, last one. There we go. Okay, last one is in. We can go ahead and get our resistors soldered. Cool. And these are a little more spread out, so it should be slightly easier to work with this time. Okay, let's go ahead and turn our fan on. Get our, just moving things over here so that I have more brass sponge to clean with. There we go. Okay, let's get a little bit of solder, solder on our iron, ready to go. Okay, and let's get to it. All set there. That was pretty quick and straightforward. You can go ahead and clip these leads. Handy dandy flush cutters. Now, you might ask, pardon me, do I hold on to these leads? And I do. Uh, the reason is, is that I can use them for practicing, just, you know, soldering things together. You can also make cool, fun little sculptures with them, or you can use them as jumpers uh, for short runs where you don't mind exposed wire. Um, and, you know, not throwing them away means less pollution and junk in the environment. So I collect them. I put them in a little, uh, you know, container that I have here to hold on my leads. So always good to hold on to those just in case. Okay. Come here, you. Okay, and last one right here. Perfect. All right, so our leads are all set uh, for the resistors. So that part is done. We've got our resistors on and happy. And just checking the work here really quick. It probably used a little more than I actually needed to, but you know what? I'd rather have a nice, solid, happy, connection there. So the next one we're going to do is the, I think we're going to do the dipole switches really quick because um, those will be a little easier to put on before we do the, uh, the LEDs. So I'm going to rest this flat on the surface here and make sure that I get a good uh, solid hold on it. Like it's not going to wiggle around too much, and then I'm just going to solder down one of the um, one of the leads on this really quick. Stay in there, please. Hey, come here. <laughs> it's like no, I want to come with you. Okay, so we're just going to do one of these to kind of pin it in place. Good, and then we'll do one over here. Uh, 
Uh, that one's not great. Let's finish that, please. Uh, yeah, I'm getting a cold joint there. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna clean that up. I gotta take a look at this one and see what's going on here. And again, sorry for the background noise. I can't uh, super control what's going on in the background there. Oh, okay, it's not awful. It's not as... Uh... Yeah, it's okay. I think that second one helped do it. Okay, and then we'll do the other uh, four leads really quick. And I can do this with this up here, like that. Oh, don't want that to run away. There we go. Okay. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think that's solidly on there. Okay, cool. So we'll do the next one over here. Should be on the flip side here. There we go. We'll do the same thing. We'll get it pinned down first uh, using two of the leads, and then we'll do the whole thing nicely. We'll just kind of hold it down in place there. Perfect. Get this out of the way. All right. Time for a few more. Okay. Should be good. Well, two of those don't look so hot, so I might have to re-solder them. Um, we'll see. They might be okay. Okay, so now we have our switches in, so we can do on and off. And uh, next thing we're gonna do is our four LEDs which have a anode and a cathode. And they also have a little flat side, uh, which indicates the anode. 
So that's going to go like that. And we get bent like that. So it doesn't go anywhere. And I think I can do all of these. Yeah, I can do all of the other ones. All right. So we can do it here. There we go. That's nice and on there and not going anywhere. Perfect. All right, two more. Okay, that bent a little sharply, but it should still be fine. All right, last one. We're making sure we're doing all of these correctly because we do not want the magic smoke. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I allude to magic smoke as when a component burns up and then release, releases heat in the form of smoke. And we don't want that, so we're trying to avoid it as much as possible. Okay, so we've got all our LEDs set on the board. I'm just going to double check. Everything looks fine there. Okay, we're good to start soldering. So let's go ahead and flip this, bring this back, clip it up, and get to work. You may notice there's like a yellowish substance on the board here. That is the resin that is in the solder that I'm using that causes it to chemically bind. Uh, when I do the soldering, and that is necessary. You can also have resin in a paste form, which is what this is. You can use it like that, um, as so. And you can also have resin in a pen liquid form. Uh, usually it's in, they have it in a little bottle, but I have it just like this. And we're actually going to um, try to use a little bit this time, because I was having some problems with the uh, soldering previously. So we're just going to put a little bit of flux. Actually, this is flux, not resin, so slightly different word. Sorry. Come on. Yeah, we got some on there now. Okay, perfect. And this is what causes the chemical reaction to occur with the metals that causes them to kind of bind together. It's exactly what we want to have happen. Perfect. Okay, cool. So that should nicely bind now, provided there are no difficulties <laughs> with this next step. Okay. You need to practice more because you use a lot of flux when you are drag soldering, which is a practice that I haven't uh, mastered or even really practiced yet. So I need to work on it some. Um, the idea behind drag soldering is you're supposed to just put a little bit of solder on the iron and then the flux comes in and helps it to like bind to the whole thing. I probably don't have enough to make it work. Yeah, whatever. We'll try it another time. We'll try another time. Okay, let's go. Seeing in that way, boom, it just automatically soldered. I didn't need to add. I put on the iron first. And then, just like that, boom, it flows. And it makes the nice little binding that I want. Let me see how that worked. Because that's my first time really trying that, so. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, 
little last one here. Okay, we should be all set. Um, just want to take a closer look at those two. Uh, yeah, that could use a teeny bit more on it, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more on these two. Right here. And right here. Okay, that looks better. Okay, that should be our LEDs, so let's Turn this off, flip it over, and take a look really quick here. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay. And all of those leads are nicely on there. Got some good work going. Okay, cool. You can go ahead and clip all of those. So let me get my clippers and remove these. And you should be wearing safety glasses when you do this sort of thing. Uh, if you don't have a way to hold on to the ends of the leads when you're clipping. And you probably should just wear safety glasses in general when clipping things because you don't want anything flying off into your face. So, I am wearing glasses. There we go, come on. flush cuts, like if I do this and I don't have it, there we go, sort of, <laughs> pseudo magnetize the end of that, okay, last one, okay, all set there, okay, Looking good with all the soldering. Perfect. Okay, so next components we're probably gonna do is the connector for the battery, which is a nice tri-pole connector. It only goes in one way. That way is this way. <laughs> it's the next biggest component. And then we have to do the four uh, 1000 microfarad um, units. So. Let me get this out of the way here. And I think I can just rest this down here. And this is a pretty beefy uh, connector, so we need to make sure that it uh, is gonna rest flush with the board and isn't gonna like slide around while I'm trying to solder it, uh, which is tricky to get how we want. So maybe if I do this, this will be a little, yeah, sorta. Not exactly how I want it to be there, but it's better than nothing, so we'll start with that. Okay. Okay. Because this is such a big component, we really gotta hold the iron against it for a while to get the pad to heat up. Uh-oh. <laughs> Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay. Now we're now we're cooking. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. Last component here. Come on, get hot, please. There we go. All right, perfect. Okay. 
Okay, so we have our handy dandy connectors happy on there. We've got quite a bit flowing into the other side from that, but that's fine. So the connection is looking good on this end, which is good because I'm going to need to practice this uh, some more. A friend wants me to do some um, battery placements. Hello, Mr. Mr. Phoenix AZ. We are working on a soldering project. Uh, we are making some electronics practice kits. Uh, the first one that we're working on here is building a kit on how to learn electronics work in series versus parallel for resistors and for uh, capacitors. So that's what we're building. And we're almost done. We already got all of our resistors in and we've got our LEDs in and we've got our on off switches in and we just put our tripole uh, power connector in. So now we're gonna do the four capacitors, which are the 1000 microfarad beefy boys. So I'm going to go ahead and get these in and I'm just going to do the ones across first, uh, just so that it's a little easier to uh, manage this while I'm doing it because they are very big um, and a bit unwieldy. So we're going to be focusing on that first. How are you doing? I've seen you stream in a bit, been lurking a little bit in your channel um, when I've had time, but I've been a little busy with other things, so I haven't had a chance to say hi. But I have been stopping by when you've been on. So that is cool. Now, hold on, let me just, there we go, okay. Just wanna make sure these capacitors aren't gonna, that one's really solidly on there, this one is a little bit loose. Let's see if we can't do something about that. That's better. Okay. Yeah, these are really big capacitors. Just showing some love to all that are on. Yeah, for sure, dude. Your support has always been really good. Okay, last one in this row. And then we're going to do the other one that is underneath um, afterwards so that we can just get these three solidly on here first. Okay like it if you just were to there we go perfect sorry for the slightly awkward uh, camera angle I don't have a great setup for this but I still want to share what I'm doing so I'm doing the best I can uh, to show it as I work on it um, did this say what this is it looks like it's for automotive no this is um, this is purely for learning how electronics work so I have some other kits that I'll pull over in a moment here that I already finished um, We'll show them probably closer a little to the end of the stream, but it's it's just for learning uh, electronics. So I can hold this up a little bit, and you can, if I get the angle right here, and just a moment because my feed leads lags slightly behind. Oh yeah, we're going to take it down a little bit. Um, you can see the calculations for uh, capacitance and resistance in parallel on the board, and then the labels for what all the parts are and um, the different resistors and capacitors and all that kind of stuff. So. It's really for learning the basics of electronics um, from scratch, which I know very little bit about electronics and I've wanted to learn. So that's why I um, got these kits, or I should say the kits were gifted to me so that I could learn some more and then practice some soldering in the process, which is also a nifty little um, advantage of that. Yeah, um, I have this other one here. Like I said, I was going to wait a little bit, but this one uh, shows you what happens if you use different uh, capacitors excuse me, and what those capacitors do uh, to light the LED when they are in use. Um, and then I have another kit over here that shows a bunch of resistors and what different value resistors do when you use them and how they affect uh, how bright the LEDs display. And I'll, like I said, I'll show all of these. Um, I might be holding this a little, no, I'm holding it just right, perfect. So these are ones that I finished last weekend, uh, and then we're doing these two kits, or this kit and then one other kit today. And then next weekend, we're gonna do a slightly beefier kit that has to do with the logic gates. And I'm super excited for that one because I do a lot of computer science stuff. And building physical logic gates is just, to be honest, kind of kind of exciting. I'm a bit of a dork, but that's what it is. <laughs> logic gates underpin how processors work. And so if you understand logic gates, you can build a basic processor and you can build memory circuits and other cool things like that to store information in a computer as long as it has some power running to it. Um, unless you're using a different type of memory that stores when there is no power running to it, but that's a different discussion. 
So let's go ahead and prep our soldering iron here. And we're gonna solder these resistors in. Uh, we're gonna solder these capacitors in place. See, I keep mixing up the words capacitor and resistor. And we have to tin the soldering iron. And it's, it's actually kicking off a little bit of <laughs> sparks here because I, it's been sitting hot. All right, so now we've got a nice tin soldering iron. So let's go ahead and solder. And to be honest, these are pretty basic components to be soldering. Uh, no, no worries, not at all. Okay. Okay, that looks good, yeah. Okay, we'll go ahead and snip these. So they look good. got to get that last capacitor in. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Perfect. All right, last capacitor. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Got the right angle. Okay. All right, welcome back from the ad break. If you got caught in that, I apologize. Uh, they are a little overzealous recently, and I may be tweaking it in the future. But we just uh, soldered those three capacitors, and we're going to solder the last one here really quick. And then we'll be done uh, with that, and I can connect the power and get a battery on that, and we'll see what it does. So let's go ahead and get my soldering iron. Looks looks good already it looks fairly tinned but i'm just gonna for caution's sake get some extra solder on there clean it we want a nice shiny tip when we are soldering because we want the electrical or the heat flow to be really nice so we'll go ahead and hold that there we feed the solder once the pad heats up and the component good okay so that's good so i got it this and then this last one here all right boom oh hold on that needs a little more okay that might be a cold joint i might have to redo that one let me take a look at this really quick here that's when you when you heat up the, only one part and it doesn't actually join correctly uh no, it looks okay. There's a little too much solder on it, but it looks like it did actually join. So we should be fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and clip those leads really quick here with our handy dandy little clippers. And as a note to anybody watching, I am using lead solder. Um, there's a lot of discussion about whether you should use leaded, non-leaded solder. Um, the general consensus is that leaded solder is easier to work with and as long as you wash your hands and use a proper uh, filter smoke absorber like I have here, you should be okay. Just don't go, you know, stuff in your hands and your face um, in the middle of soldering. Wash them correctly and make sure that you wash your surface that you are working on as well. Okay, so 
We are all done with the soldering portion of the whole thing. We've got our capacitors in series and in parallel. We've got our resistors in series and in parallel. We'll go ahead and put the feet on here real quick, which is just a simple little uh, screwdriver into a little PC style mount thing here. It's just so we can set this down and we don't have to worry about any of the components touching uh, when it is resting on the ground. Okay, that one's on. And uh, as I'm working on this, I actually have a couple more complex projects. One of them is that I am going to be assembling, and this is going to probably take multiple days to do, uh, an entire Bluetooth speaker kit from scratch. And that one's got a full-on like microcontroller processor in it, which is going to be tricky because it's, it's probably the most complex thing I've soldered so far. Um, so I'm kind of building up to, to doing that sort of thing. Okay, and there's the last foot here. So let me go ahead and get that screw in there. And then get the last uh, foot on there. One nice, whoops, there we go. One nice thing about these kits I in particular is they do use nine volt batteries. Um, other kits, whoop, is that sticking? Hold on. Yeah, the screw isn't. There it goes, okay. So the nice thing about these kits is that the, uh, the connector for the battery isn't hardwired to the actual board. You, it's just a plug and you can connect a power source as long as I believe it's a nine volt power source uh, to it using this handy dandy little thing here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and connect uh, just a regular nine volt battery, nothing special about it. Um, I am, I am not shilling for any particular brand. It's just the one I happen to have in my household. And uh, so we got our power hooked up and we just plug it in here like this and we're good to go. So let's go ahead and kill the light uh, really quick and let's see what it does uh, when I turn it on. So our power is flowing through our parallel and series resistors, resistors here. And we may notice that the light is way brighter on the parallel resistors than it is on the series resistors. It's much, much dimmer on the series resistors. So the parallel resistor is, it says here, only fly, providing 430 ohms of resistance. And I don't know how that calculator, okay, so one over, one over each resistor. So yeah, it's, it's not providing much resistance at all, whereas parallel, Oh no, series is one over, one over each summed. That's series capacitance, okay, not parallel. Parallel resistance is much lower. Series resistance is all of these added up. So it's a whopping 20,470 ohms of resistance, which means this LED is barely even lit up. You can't really even see it uh, on there very well. If I hold this a bit closer, it might be uh, clearer to see. And I just have to wait for my computer to catch up so I can make sure that you are actually seeing what I am showing you here really quick. Sorry, my bit rate dropped a chunk there. So yes, we have not a ton of resistance on this, whereas the series resistance is much, much higher. Okay, uh, and then we can take a look at the capacitance on the other side. And those immediately turn on. And if we turn it off, the series capacitance is much higher than the parallel capacitance. So two LEDs lit at the same time, turn it off, and the LEDs behind the series capacitor stays on a lot longer than the one behind the parallel capacitor because they drain in the series. One's feeding uh, power to the next, and then that feeds into the LED. So longer LED light on after we lose power, and then these two, because they're parallel, it just drains on both of ones. Cool, learning electronics is awesome. All right, let's get our light back on. And then it is time to move on then to the next board, which I think we're gonna have time for. Yeah, we definitely have time to work on it. Okay, so that is our uh, series versus parallel project. And we can learn from that instructions, turn on capacitance switch. When you turn it off, notice how long it takes for each light to turn off. To calculate parallel capacitance and series resistance, simply sum their values. Okay. 
So you just sum the capacitance here, 2000 microfarads of uh, capacitance, and this one is 500 microfarads, 2000 microfarads, 500, and then yeah, we calculate the whole thing. Okay, so that project is all done. We're just gonna set it to the side here, and let's go ahead and get our next one ready to go. That's a cool, fun project. Learning more about electronics, woohoo. All right, next one over here is our multiplexer board. And this one is gonna be a lot of LEDs, a lot of resistors. Fortunately, I think the resistors are all the same, so it shouldn't be super complex in that regard. Um, and then a lot of LEDs, like I said. Okay, got a mosquito buzzing around. I might smack it really quick here. Okay, let's get our stuff out. I'm just gonna set my battery over here for future use. Oh yeah, we have a lot of LEDs and resistors here, and we have a quite a big board that we're gonna be working with on this one also. And the cool thing about this particular project is that it actually can be hooked up to an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, and you can use it to control the LEDs on the project. And I will probably do that in a future video. I do have a small Arduino board that I can program um, that came with all of this, and we will use that to do some cool stuff later on. Okay, let's get all of our components out of the little plastic bag here. Come on. And yes, they are all 470 ohm resistors, so that should go quickly, fortunately. Okay, let's get our things sorted. We have our dipole power. That guy, we've got all of our resistors here. Uh, we've got our press switches, which I'm gonna throw in the big bin over here. Okay, whoops. Uh, is that all? Seems like there should be more. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's all eight of those. Uh, we have our feet for our board, which we're just gonna throw in that little bin there. Okay, good. Uh, we have some connectors for our Arduino Raspberry Pi projects. Uh, which would go right on here. We'll do those a little later. So we'll set these over here. And then we've got a series of LEDs. We've got blue, red, green, and yellow. So we will do green. Uh, we'll do these in order, um, but I'm just gonna kind of split them up by color here to keep uh, easier track. We'll put all of our red ones over here. Uh, we'll put all yellow ones over here. So I'm gonna move these really quick. Oops, I got a blue one there. Uh, there it is. I just thought I was missing one for a second. I was like, oh no. I don't wanna be missing any of these, please. That would be most unfortunate. Okay, there we got our yellow ones there and we'll throw our blue ones over on the side over here. Perfect. So we're gonna start off with the resistors of which we have a lot. Um, I am counting 4, 8, 12, 16 resistors we have to put in. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, just pull all these out and set them here so that we can just work with them easily. And these are all 470 ohm resistors, so we should get a nice bright light uh, from the different um, LEDs that we have. Different LEDs do have different power that they use. And so if you use the same resistor across different color LEDs, you will not get the same color necessarily out of all of those LEDs. Or the same brightness, I should say. You will definitely get different colors because uh, they are different color LEDs, but you will not get the same brightness from all those LEDs if you use the same resistor across all of them. So certain LEDs have different power requirements. There's actually a calculation for that. I don't have it off the top of my head here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and drop our 470 ohm LEDs into all of these spots. So I'm just going to go ahead and work on this. And while I'm working on that, I'll take a moment to say thank you to everyone who has stopped by and is chatting. And I hope that you are enjoying this. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, I would definitely appreciate your feedback because I am new at this. Um, so I'm learning. And when learning, it is always good to seek input. Um, I'm going to need... That thing is just gets 
dimmer and dimmer it feels like. There we go. Okay. I need to double check the color on this because it's hard to see. Yeah. Yellow, purple, red, gold. Okay. 470. All right. We're doing top to bottom with this. So We're going to do these a row at a time just to make it a little easier to work with. Um, we'll, so we'll, we'll solder and clip each row as we go. Get that over there. Perfect. Oh, I immediately did this upside down, didn't I? No, no, I didn't. Yellow, purple, gold. Okay. Yeah. Do, 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 do. All right. And learning us some sciences. I have always had a fascination with electrical engineering. It isn't what I went into um, when I did my undergraduate study, but part of me almost wishes I had. Um, in the end, I did computer science, and I enjoy that a lot. Uh, but I've always been fascinated by the actual things that make the computers tick and give you the results uh, that they do. So that is why I have been working on these projects, because this is getting into the very basics of uh, electrical engineering and how we create and make cool circuits that do things for us. All right, cool. One more and we'll solder this row. Easy enough. I'm not gonna run out of solder anytime soon, so that's good. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we'll do all the resistors first because uh, they are the component that sits most flush to the board. And so we don't have to worry too much about um, getting them to sit flush when we're working on them. I'm just gonna move all of these uh, other resistors over here out of the way. And hopefully not break any of them in the process. Just come over here, please. Thank you. Okay. So it's not moving around so much. Okay, I've got my board clipped in. And then a do not connect a 9 volt power supply and the Arduino at this or RPI at the same time. It could cause damage. Oh, that's good to know because I definitely don't want to damage my either my Arduino or Raspberry Pi. I actually have a Raspberry Pi right above me that is uh, serving as a small server. And then my Arduino is upstairs. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, retin our tip. So that's nice and happy. Okay. Good to go. And away we go with the capacitor. Or the, the resistor, sorry. Okay, first set done. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Okay, let's inspect the work really quick. Make sure it looks good. Yeah, there's quite a bit of flow through on that one, <laughs> but not a ton like my previous one. So this is getting better. You know, that's what they say, practice, and that's why I'm practicing on all of these. A lot of the stuff in the Bluetooth speaker kit is going to be surface mount resistors, so I am a bit nervous about that one because uh, those are tiny, and yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting process to do those for sure. Okay. Go ahead and clip all these and get ready to move on to the next set of resistors. row 
row done. Let's go ahead and get the next row mounted. Looks very good. Okay, cool. Okie dokie then. When you're doing the Bluetooth speaker, um, it may not be for a little while. So this one, uh, these two kits I'm doing this weekend. Next weekend, I said I'm going to do the Logic Gate kit. Um, and then I will actually be on vacation for a little bit. Um, so I might just do a short stream. And then next spring, uh, sometime in January, is when I will be starting on the Bluetooth speaker kit. Hopefully. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm ready for it. I also haven't fully decided if I want to do that one off, on or off stream because I anticipate uh, that I'm going to be making a lot of mistakes, but it is also very useful um, to make mistakes when other people can see them so that other people can comment on your mistakes and help you learn from them, you know? And I am not afraid of um, learning in that regard. So if you don't see it happening, don't worry. All of these videos do go on YouTube. Uh, after they are done. So there's an archive of all of the uh, work that I'm doing on YouTube, and you can find that link under the info page or uh, the about panel uh, on Twitch, and it will show you where that link is. I think it's, since YouTube brought about their new um, their new handle system, it's just at hi Patrick, um, if you know their new URL scheme. So youtube.com slash at hi underscore pat underscore trick. Should do it. And if you are watching this video on YouTube, thank you very much. And I hope that you are enjoying what you are watching so far. And I appreciate your input, especially if you have experience doing this sort of thing, because once again, I'm learning. And uh, the best way to learn is to get input from people who know how and learn from their knowledge. Uh, it's also known as a process of learning where you do learning by doing, essentially. Um, and there's a specific learning theory behind it, but I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head right now. Okay. But I'm, I'm, I'm moving faster, uh, you know, than I used to on these. The first kit that I did took me a really long time because it was just so new. That one's upstairs. It's just a simple little thing that lights up LEDs when you, um, when you press the buttons. And then the other kit that was with it was a... Um, it had little rotors so you could turn on a, a multicolor single LED and make it turn different colors depending on how far you turned the, um, the pentiometer uh, on the kit. So that was cool. And then I did this beefy one that I have over to the side here, which um, I still haven't taken the time to really study how it works, but it's got a bunch of uh, little integrated circuits in it. And you turn it on and you press a button and some LEDs light up and when you press the button the LEDs stop blinking and you are given a value of two six-sided dice so it's got like the pips on the die are the LEDs and then you, uh, you can use it to roll dice in a digital manner which I think is kind of cool okay let's get that on there all right that looks good I'm gonna do this click here Bada bing, bada boom, and we're ready to solder the next set. Okay. Just a quick little visual confirmation that everything looks good. Okay, awesome. Good to take time. Don't need to move fast. Just move at a slow, steady pace and get the work done. All right, and get a little more solder here so I don't have to tug at it when I'm ready to go. Okay, get my fan on. I might need to get a new brass sponge in the not-so-distant future here. Okay, we are ready to go. We'll just put a little bit on the tip of our soldering iron there. And away we go. A little bit of a splash spark on that one. That's fine. I will be fine. Okay. 
Okay, next row done. And uh, for those who might be curious, I have my soldering iron set to 315 centigrade. Um, different people like have their own recommendations, but that is uh, that is the temperature based off of uh, reading what other people have done and what other people do when they are themselves. Whoops, I need to keep this clipped so that I can unclip. Um, based off of reading around and looking at other people's projects, 315 seems to be a good temperature for uh, both the solder that I'm using and for the type of components that I am uh, soldering. So. so it is very hot. Do not touch the soldering iron. Bad idea. <laughs> Gotta be safe. Okay, flush cutting all these. All right, next row of resistors. Here we go. I just want to take a look. That seems like barely enough solder on that one. Uh, I'm. I'm going to add a little more solder to these first resistors. I should have done that before clipping it because there's not quite enough on there. Uh, so let's do that real quick. Okay, that looks a bit better. Yeah, that looks much, uh, much better. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Next row of resistors. Here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, flip this over and uh, purple on top. So a lot of this is, is not so much the soldering part, it's the just learning what components, how they go in. Uh, the soldering seems to go fairly quickly once you get moving with it. And then uh, keeping track of everything, because the, the Bluetooth kit has so many parts. It's got like some 60 or something uh, surface mount LEDs and resistors. It's a bit crazy because it has a little... It, it has that audio visualizer that you see on some stereo kits where it shows how much, you know, each audio level is showing, um, you know, your treble, bass, mid-range, and what have you, and it's supposed to flash and light up. So that thing is going to be, it's going to be complex when I get to it. <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm a little nervous to actually do that one um, on stream, but we're going to give it a good, good try. All right, almost done with the resistors here. Later on, if I ever take the time to redo these videos, I might actually uh, speed up this part so you don't have to sit here waiting for me to put all the resistors in, solder them. But, you know, the conversation is also nice, so. All right, and I am moving a little faster as we, as we continue to work on this. So that is also good. All right, cool. Ready to go there. Let's clip it in and solder it up. Need more solder. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, that's that's getting uh, becoming a problem. Let me see what I can do about that. I think I might be burning the board a little bit there. Can't tell. Uh, no, it looks okay. It's not the best work that I've done. I'm going to add a little bit of flux to that real quick here. Use that to clean it up. Yeah, I think I'm actually getting on the board there a little bit, which we don't want to do. Damaging the board is a bad idea, okay? <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and, and desolder this a little bit here. We get the There we go. That's a lot better. Cool. All right, inspect the work before we clip the leads. Yeah, those all look good. Great. Okay, we'll go ahead and clip those leads. And then we're on the last low row. Row. Low. The last row of resistors. And then we can start in on the LEDs. Okay, great. Last set of resistors here for this one. Uh, yeah, it looks okay. All right, cool. last of these leads here to get this last resistor in and just make sure that none of them are I like them to look visually the same so we're making sure that the color bands are all in the same direction just so we can get a nice uh, visual appearance on the whole thing here all right all right that's all set looks good there looks good there ready to start soldering Okay, great. Let's do it.
This is when it started to get a little hot, so I'm just gonna give it a moment to cool down a tad. Okay, there we go. Okay, I think that's good. Let's double check our work here. Yeah, it looks like there's plenty of solder on every single one of those. It's definitely flowing through a lot on the far side, so it's, it's because the uh, through holes are so big. Uh, so when I, when I feed the solder, it's just soaking up straight through. Okay, let's go ahead and clip the leads. Awesome. You know, I have to be careful that's not touching there because that looks like there could be some. Oh no, it's just a flux. Don't need to worry about it so much. Okay, or rosin. Less of a problem than I thought it was. Cool. We could take the time to uh, make this all nice with some isopropyl alcohol, but uh, we want to get through the project, so I'm going to go back later and clean it up. Okay, so we're done with all the resistors, finally. Our resistors are on the board and looking happy, and uh, we're making some progress. Next one is going to be doing all of the little push buttons, and there's, uh, excuse me, there's four uh, diodes to do, or four leads to do for every single one of these, so it's going to take a little bit. Um, so we're going to do these flush to the surface, and I may have to bend these a little bit to get them to go in correctly. Uh, yeah, and then the, the question is, of course, which way are they supposed to go? Because they could go uh, this way or this way. Well, I think they only will go one way. Yep, they're only going to go one way, so I don't need to worry about that part at least. All right, cool. So if I put those in, they kind of stay put? Yes? Yeah, more or less. Okay, cool. Hopefully I can just throw four of them in and then solder them all real quick uh, without having to worry too much. Okay, cool. Oh, that one's got a bent foot, so that's going to cause some problems here. Just a moment. Yeah, that should do it. Okay, yeah, all of these are sitting nice and flush, so that is great. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, we are all set there. And those look really good. Uh, so we are now good to flip this over and start soldering all these little itty bitty parts along here. Uh, and they're not going anywhere, they're staying in place, so. I feel confident, confident enough to just go ahead and do this uh, with the alligator clips here. You don't have to worry about holding it flush with the tabletop. Okay. Ready to go. Let's get started. Uh, these are actually a bit smaller. So for this one, I apologize. I'm going to have to use the uh, magnifying glass just so I can see my work a little better. Uh, while I'm doing it here. Let's slide this down some, maybe. There we go. Yeah, I gotta be able to see what I'm doing. Okay.
I'll stop there and clean my iron, let it cool for a moment. And moving right along. Okay, first row of buttons done, I think. Let's uh, take this back and take a look here. Yeah, those will look really solid. Awesome, okay. And those are nicely on there and not going anywhere. Perfect. All right, next step is the four across the bottom there. Let's go ahead and get those done. LEDs will follow shortly thereafter, and then our uh, connector for the power and our standoffs for the Arduino slash Raspberry Pi hookup. And I'm going to have to watch the video on how they do the, um, the hookup for the, Raspberry, the Arduino stuff. I haven't done that one yet. All right. Okay, I think those are solidly on there, so we can go ahead and start soldering those joints uh, nice and happy. Cool. All right. Just going to reset my light there because it likes to turn off in the middle of working on it. So there we go. OK, perfect. And I'll just have to shift this around as I, as I work here. OK, cool. Back to it. Need to redo my, whoops. Coding there, because it's getting a little lackluster. Okay, cool. Okay, got to take a moment to let my iron cool a little, and I need to move my magnifying glass so that I can see the rest of the leads I need to solder. Okay, so we're good there. Okay.
that one needs a bit more. Hold on. Okay, we're all set there. Beautiful. Okay, so our little buttons are all nicely soldered on and the leads look great. No problems at all. Yeah, that looks really nice. That one does not look so hot. So I'm gonna reheat that one and, and get some flux on it really quick here. Um, the one I'm talking about is this, this little guy uh, right here. So let me get some flux on it and uh, redo that one really quick because it does not look good. Okay. Magnifying glass to get a good look at this. Okay. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay. Less of a problem now. That looks way better than it did. Okay. All the others look nice and bright. They should look bright and shiny and have a little bit of a dome. Okay. So we are done with our major buttons across the side and the bottom. And now we're going to start with our blue LEDs across the top. Let's go ahead and get our blue LEDs over here. And the anode and cathode, pretty straightforward. In this case, the cathode is going to go to the left on all of these, the little flat part. There we go. And actually, it might be easier if I did these top to bottom instead of left to right because of the way the pins are. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do blue, red, green, yellow, top to bottom, and then solder and move across. It's gonna be just easier to, um, to do because of the way the pins are bending and I don't want them getting in the way. So I'm gonna put my, all my blue LEDs back over here and we'll grab the ones that we need to do from top to bottom. So red is next. Uh, the cathode and the anode oriented in that direction. green okay. and then last of all yellow and I'm gonna move these around in my little bins here so that it's easier for me to just go from left to right which means top to bottom so blue red green and then yellow last perfect oops come on there we go okay and then yellow. Okay, those are nice and flush on the board there, not going anywhere, so let's go ahead and solder. Okay, ready to go. I've got enough, well, I'm gonna have to untape solder here so that I can get more just in case thank you okay perfect if I come around again then we'll be ready okay
Okay, I noticed that last one I did did not really take very well, so we're just adding a little more there. Okay, cool. Sort of. Okay, let's take a look at these joints. Some of them don't look great to me, so I want to make sure. Yeah, those last two are not not very good. Um, we're gonna put some flux on those two and then redo them. Uh, okay, let me do this really quick. I just wanna pre-flux them anyway, going forward. It'd be easier. <laughs> All right. It's, it's cold joint. It's bugging me. Maybe that'll help. Okay. Okay, that looks better. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, we can go ahead and snip these leads. So do that real quick here. Then on to the next set of four. It's much easier to have my right hand controlling the snipping than my left, so we're just going to do it that way. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, the first set of LEDs are now attached, so on to the next. Starting with the blue. When in doubt, just remember that the short one is the one to the left. So a little bit of a flat indicator on the LED itself too, so that helps. I 
interesting enough, LEDs, or light-emitting diodes, are also a form of resistor. The resistor generates heat, and the heat in the LEDs is released as light. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Go. All right. Colors are correct. Let's go ahead and clip it and solder it. on top so that it's not in the way. All right, here we go. There we go, that's a lot cleaner. I think the problem I was having is I wasn't adequately heating the pad. I was just heating the lead. There, that seems pretty good to me. strong but they still look okay the rest look great okay perfect clippity clip clip but we go So many leads to clip today, holy cow. <laughs> uh, and last one on this side. Okay. All right, next set of LEDs. We are just trucking along here. Okay, starting from the top is blue. Then red. Okay. Then green. I have a set way of doing this. I don't know why I decided to suddenly do something different. <laughs> All right, last one is yellow. Okay, cool. Okay, awesome. We are ready to solder that, so let's get to it. Oh, 
sorry, had a bit of a surprise moment there. It was not as hot as I, it was, I, it was hot. <laughs> it wasn't super hot though, it just surprised me. Give me a little bit of a startle there. Okay, cool. Let's make sure we heat the pad and the lead. Okay, good. No, that, whoa, oh, it did transfer, okay. Surprisingly enough, it did its thing. Okay, cool. Hmm, hold on a sec. There we go. Much better. Okay, last one. Hmm, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do a quick inspection like I always do to make sure that these all look good. And they do all look good to me. Okay, cool. Let's clip them. And then we have the last set of LEDs and then we only have a few more components after that and we can test this puppy. Whoops, and see how it looks. I'm excited to, to see what this one does. I have, think I have an idea of what it's supposed to do, but we will see. It's like a, a matrix of LED light, depending on the buttons being pressed. And you either get a row or a column or a single LED, depending on what might be pressed, would be my guess. And it is, is a somewhat educated guess based on my understanding of computer science and uh, how it might behave. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Okay, last lead here. And I'm feeling a little more comfortable using my left hand to do this. Sorry, I know it's blocking the shot a little bit there. Okay, last row of LEDs. Look at this thing coming together. All right, blue first. And with the short lead, make sure we're only putting the anode and the cathode in the correct spots, because that would be bad if we did it wrong at this point. And the magic smoke decided to visit us, so let's not do that. He says as he almost does exactly that. Okay, cool. There we go. Okay, that's a little loose. Let's see if we can't get that a bit tighter on there. Yeah, it's okay. They're not all going to sit surface mount flush. All right, green. Okay. And yellow for the last one. Okay, we are good on that. That looks good to me. So let's go ahead and solder this. And um, yeah, this one I'm gonna I'm gonna try and well, that might be a little too far away. Let's see if we can't clip it here, maybe. It's a little heavy if I do that. Yeah, we're gonna have to do it this way, I think. Yeah, that should work best. All right, uh huh. Okay, great. So we're good to go on that. Let's go ahead and power it up and uh, clean our soldering iron. I need to rotate my brass brush in here a little bit because it is kind of a mess. Okay. And uh, we'll go ahead and add some pre-tinning. Get it nice and clean. Okay, we're good to go. Right from the get-go. Okay, awesome. Okay. Three, 
Okay, perfect. Uh -huh, that's gonna be... Okay, yep. Okay, and one last one. Okay, we're all set. Awesome. Not nice and clean. I'm still got some gunk on my iron here. Hold on. <laughs> okay, that's better. I'll just scoop that over there. Okay, cool. Okay, so once again, inspect our work. See what we got here. Yeah, that second to last one isn't amazing, but I think it's still enough to conduct. But the first one looks, the first set look really good. Okay, great. Okay, now we're gonna snip some leads off here. I don't wanna get that flush, there we go. Got the quite the collection of uh, <laughs> of leads growing here. Okay, and last but not least. Okay, so all our LEDs are now installed, which is awesome. We've got most of the board ready to go here. Now we have to do the uh, mount here for the power, and we have to do the two standoffs, which are for the Raspberry Pi or Arduino connection. So we're gonna do, I think, the standoffs first since they are the same height. And we can just set that up and then set it on the, uh, on the ground here. Whoops, you can see one of them already fell right out. So we're gonna have to kind of finagle this so that it'll stay put. Maybe I should do one at a time, I don't know. Both of them at once might be a little ambitious. Uh, Okay, go. no, got it, got it. Okay, we got it, good. All right, those aren't going anywhere. So we can do that right there. Let me get this out of the way here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and do all four of these. And this is gonna be good practice because you actually have to um, solder the Arduino, Arduino uh, connectors as well. So by doing this first, getting a little bit of um, practice in for when I have to do the Arduino uh, for the standoffs for that one. So. This is good that we are doing this now. All right, let's go ahead and uh, pretend our soldering it here so that it is nice and clean. I'm gonna clean it. And we'll just go right down the row here uh, really quick. Come on. Please heat up, thank you. You know you want to. That is not, okay, there it goes. It was just not getting hot for some reason. Okay, cool. Okay, those are good. Now we'll do the ones across the top. Come on, there you go. And last but not least, that one right there, okay, cool. All right, so we got our standoffs done. So those should be nice and on there. They're not at the best angle ever, but I think I can just lightly bend it maybe. Eh, it's fine, it's slightly bent. I could probably take the time to, um, to go on the back here and uh, loosen it up, but you know what? It's not gonna be perfect and that's okay by me. 
Uh, if I need, I might just be able to uh, just a teeny bit there. Okay, perfect. Yep. Now we're good. Okay. Last one we need to do is the barrel connector uh, for the power. So we're just going to go ahead and plop that in there just like that. And we'll go ahead and set it up against our uh, standoff here so that it's not going anywhere. And then we'll do those three pins right there. Okay. The reason we pre-tin this is so that it conducts heat a little bit better for when we want to do this. So now I'm ready with this connector here. And we're just feeding and waiting for it to heat, to heat, to heat. And it's a really big standoff here, so it needs to, there, okay, it's sort of heating. There it goes. I'm gonna feed a lot of heat to it for that. All right, we'll do this one on the top side. We'll do the bottom next, right here. Just get that in there, good, good, good. Okay, that one's connected, and then the last one right here. I'm gonna clean this really quick, there we go. All right. Uh, let me just get this connector done. There we go. We want a nice amount of connection going there. Okay, all done. Awesome. Uh, I'll be done in like five minutes. Yep, thanks. Okay, so we have our connector on there, uh, and those those connections all look really solid. I'm just taking a quick double check there. Oh, that could be a little more on that one, but you know what? Not going to stress on it. All right, now we need to put our standoffs on, so we'll go ahead and grab all of those and start connecting them. Um, we'll go ahead and do that. Get our standoffs going. Okay, standoff number one, standoff number two, numero dos. Okay. Okay. Third standoff here. All right, and the last standoff right over here. Okay. Come on. Doesn't quite want to. There we go. Just getting the threads to do their thing there for a moment. Okay, come on. Okay, so we are all set with our finished product here. Uh, with the whole thing going. And it looks pretty good. We got a whole LED matrix. We've got our resistors. Uh, we've got our um, standoffs here for if we want to connect our Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Uh, we've also got our colors for blue, red, green, and yellow, and then we can also probably do columns. So let's go ahead and hook our power up and see what it does. Before I do that, though, I'm going to go ahead and just um, clean my soldering iron real quick. Since I'm pretty much wrapped with it, uh, we're going to go ahead and tin it one more time, and then I'm going to turn it off after I clean it so that it can cool uh, and get a nice patina on the tip there so it doesn't, uh, so it stays clean. Okay, yeah, looks good. We're going to go and turn the soldering iron off. So we're done with that, and it'll cool down pretty quickly. All right, let's plug it in, and moment of truth, see what it does. I've already got my battery connector here. I don't need to use the one that came with the kit because they are universal, fortunately. So we'll go ahead and plug this in just like that, and let's kill the lights and see what it does. So we've got buttons. If I press this button, uh-oh, nothing is happening, which tells me that something is not connected correctly. Or do I have to press both of them? Aha! 
So we have to press two buttons of a row and a column to get a specific LED to light up. So it doesn't do row, it only does if you have two at the same time. So we can go down the row, we can go down like that, or I don't know if we can go across. Yeah, we can go across like this. So we've got a, a matrix of uh, LEDs lighting up based on uh, what it is that I'm pressing here with my cool little, and the blue ones are super bright. Like I was saying earlier, the blue is gonna be super bright, the red's gonna be bright, the green not as bright, and the yellow uh, somewhat bright. And that has to do with just how the LEDs are made. So yeah, we're done uh, with this cool kit that we put together for multiplexers. And we should be able to, like I said, um, get an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi and connect it to these pins. Do not have this power connected when we're using it. And then we can control and say, turn on this one and this one, and it will light up specific LEDs. And we might even be able to do multiples uh, at the same time. I'll have to read up on the instructions that came with the kit to determine if that's possible, because then you could make little shapes, like you could make it flash across in a pattern or flash diagonals or things like that. So that'll be really fun to experiment with, I think, once we're ready to do that. So that wraps up our fun making uh, kits for today. We did this multiplexer kit and we did the uh, capacitance and resistance in parallel kit. And those are completely done. You can get these from eLearntronics. I am not sponsored by them or anything. I just like their stuff. I think it's pretty cool. Um, being able to do these cool learning kits and they're great for somebody like me who is just learning and setting off on their own for the first time uh, and discovering all these things and learning how to do it. So thank you so much for joining me for this stream today. If you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you'd enjoy it. I'd appreciate it if you told me your thoughts about what I did, if you have any feedback, things I could have done better uh, on learning or doing the soldering or any of this. As I say, this is all new to me, so I am learning this for the first time and having more information is always useful. Till next time, take care, stay safe, and as always, aloha, and thank you so much.